Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Health 3. Jana here. I'm your host, and I'm so glad to have you here with me today. It's a very exciting episode. Um, last episode was kind of boring to me, even though I like food. It's one of my favorite subjects. It's not my favorite thing to talk about. Um, so I'm really happy to be here with you today and talk about something very important. And that is one of the three elements of health that we talk about here in this program, and that's mental health. Um, in the next episode, I'm really excited to really hammer out a good workout with you and burn some calories. And we can touch base on how I stay in shape uh, with the ever-changing world around me and all of the busy, busy things that I have going on in my life at any given moment. So um, once again, it's so good to have you here. And thank you very much for joining me today. Uh, I want to get started with uh, a yoga practice, believe it or not. Um, and this isn't something that is going to exercise your fitness level. This is a yoga practice designed around mental health and around meditation and engaging your breathing and some calming techniques that you can use throughout your every day to help keep a strong mental health and a balance. Um, so once we get started into that, it's going to take a little while, which is good because sometimes patience needs to be exercised just as much as your muscles. And this will actually engage those elements of your brain throughout your day if you can level your breathing, have some patience, and kind of think things through, but without overthinking them. Uh, so, I want to out with me here because I'm really excited later on to share some of my art with you. And what my art does for me is strengthen my mental health. I feel like um, when you're kind of in your evening hours and your body's tired from the day, you want to lounge around and relax. And um, that can actually be a gateway to some unhealthy habits like uh, munching at night or watching too much TV, too much screen time in general. Uh, whereas, you know, some people prefer to read or do things with while stimulating their brain, but it will also help your body relax and rejuvenate so that you're not burning yourself out throughout the week and then having a super unproductive weekend. And um, productivity is very important for strong mental health. So for me, it is painting and art. So I spend a lot of my downtime just waving a paintbrush around or a pencil on paper. And I wanted to share that with you today on this episode. And you don't have to be good at it. You'll find that you really don't have to be good at it. But if you love it, you're going to do it a lot, which means you're going to get better and better. And the more you do it, the better you get and the more you impress yourself. And after all, isn't that our motto? Impress yourself every day. Make sure you're number one and that you're doing every, as much for yourself as you do for everyone else. So that is my key elements of mental health. And I do want to get started on our meditation. And then we'll come back to that a little bit later and have a look at those. So stay tuned with me. And um, I hope you can get up with me and join in. This is a practice safe for everyone. You don't have to worry about flexibility or how your strength levels are in comparison to mine. Because this is something that is going to feel very good no matter where you're at in your fitness level. And I highly encourage you participate because you're going to thank me later. <laughs> um, and by the end of this meditation, you should feel limber and have a lot of the aches and pains out of your body. It will release any pinched nerve in your neck. It will help increase a good posture throughout your day and help you connect with your breathing so that you can really focus on your metabol metabolic health as you're eating and as you're being active throughout your day, once again, bringing us back to those three elements of balance and how the mental health can tie in with your eating and your fitness. All right, so let's get started. All right, we're going to begin in the standing position and I'm really excited to have my old studio back. I like the lighting in here a lot better. Um, so it's really great and I hope you're also enjoying it. A little bit more and um, traction on the floor. 
But for this practice, I do encourage you have a little extra padding if you're working on a hard floor because we will spend a little time on our knees and a lot of time sitting. So that's very important, but that's the only really equipment that I would recommend for this practice. It's something you can just get up and do with me or wherever you are. <laughs> so I am going to start standing because we're going to start at the very top of the body, uh, always engaging the center core. However, we're going to start at the very top of the body and we're going to start to relax your neck while getting in touch with your breathing. Work our way down to the shoulders and all the way down to the toes. Just a nice little movement that you'll want to relate with perhaps the waves coming in and out and all while managing seven second breaths. We're gonna take three second inhale and let one second pass as we transition into exhaling and a three second inhale. So these long breaths will help us with our hold times. As I said earlier, it's gonna practice your and get in touch with breathing and trying to just take our time and take a beat and really focus on ourself from the inside out. So we're starting standing and definitely want to begin with that breathing technique. Just really engaging your core and pull in your belly button into your spine as you exhale and focusing your energy at the top of your crown of your head. And we're pressing the crown of the head all the way to the sky as we raise the arms up, stretching both side bodies at the same time. You can clasp your fingers if it helps intensify the stretch well enough. You want your ears between your biceps and your belly in tight here. And just a slight curvature upward for the front of your pelvic bone, just to increase the straight lengthening of your spine. Really focusing on opening your shoulders and your neck here and pressing the crown of your head all the way to the sky and release your fingers and we're gonna do a sun salutation making sure our arms are as straight as possible and your fingertips are as outstretched as you possibly can nice long breaths and you want to take at least three breaths to get your hands from the top all the way down to the Inhale, and now we're just gonna rock back and forth very slowly, sliding your fingertips down to your left knee while letting your right side body open up, letting your right arm kind of relax down to your right, right side. And transition back to the right side, sliding your right fingertips down to your knee. And just repeat that motion, once again, like the ocean waves, making sure to always Steady. This should be like you're getting a massage and getting a massage at the same time. And you'll notice my back is nice and straight from the side even. And on about the fifth or sixth rotation we're going to stop and one more sun salutation a little more quickly this time. Just up and back down and up down open your neck and shoulders and now we're just going to drop the crown down tucking your chin to your chest big breath in and focus your energy on the lower part of your neck and pull your shoulders forward really keeping your chin tucked and both arms lifting up to be outstretched in front of you Three and nice long breaths while you focus the energy on your shoulder blades. And lower your arms back down to the front. Clasping your fingers in front of you. And then release your neck from your chin from your chest. And we're gonna slowly draw the crown to the back now. Very slowly, just listen to your body. And extend your arms out in front and push your fingertips forward while clasping all your other fingers. One big breath in and as you exhale we're going to lift the arms all the way up to the sky and slowly bend the elbows, pointing your pointer fingers towards the ground behind you. 
Deep breath in, opening up your front of your neck and chest. You can spread your elbows if it's available to you. And close back, straighten your back, coming back into the standing position. Stretch your arms up to the sky, big breath in, exhale, and slowly down to the right side with your arms still up and pointed. Big breath in as you come back up to the middle, and exhale as you come back down to the left side. Breath in as you come up to the middle. Exhale as you come to the right side. Up to the left, keeping your arms straight and ears between your biceps to mind back. And one more over to the left. And back to the sun salutation. And this time we're gonna tilt the neck back or to the side, right side. Gonna bring your ear to your right shoulder and then ear to the left shoulder and rocking back and forth, focusing this time instead of on your side body, focusing on your neck. Rocking ears just back and forth, right ear to right shoulder, left ear to left shoulder, just until you feel a little bit of resistance. You don't want any pain or discomfort here. And back up, big breath in, exhale and turn your chin to the right shoulder. And back to the left shoulder, making sure to keep your belly in tight. Nice straight back posture. Is and now when you go to the right side, chin to the right, front, ear to the right, ear to the left, up, chin to the left, chin to the right, straight, ear to the right. Ear to the left, up, chin to the left. Kind of a nice little pattern. Tick tock. So we're ear, ear, chin, chin, ear, ear, chin, chin. And a couple neck rolls. Nice and steady, nice steady elongated spine while you do it so you can focus the energy on each neck muscle as they move around and around. Take one deep breath in, filling all the way to the top of your lungs and put your arms up out in front of you. And then you're going to grab the right arm and put your sh right elbow over your left, over your chest using your left arm and we're just opening up the shoulder you can t slowly turn your shoulder blade more to the left if it helps increase the intensity and both arms back to outstretched in front of you and switch nice deep breath in and as you exhale and then slowly lower your arms to the side. Quick forward bend to engage your center and core of your body. And slowly tuck your chin as you roll your spine back up standing. And reach behind you and attempt to clasp your hands behind you. This isn't available for everyone and if not, you can just have your arms straight out behind you. I'm clasping my arms. I'm opening up my shoulders in the front. I can feel it in my forceps, forearms, a little in my triceps, and I'm bending forward, pointing my pointer to the sky with the rest of my fingers clasped, really pushing my thumbs toward my head attempting to exhale and roll back up slowly and comfortably release your hands and back into the forward bend we're just gonna walk out into down dog one quick pull.
push to engage your legs because we're going to get started on them shortly. We're not quite done with the upper body yet. Still working our way down. And walking out into the push-up position, we're going to slowly lower down to the ground. Nice long breaths. And drop your hips to the mat using your palms. Slowly pushing up into up dog. Chin parallel to the ground for now. Just focusing on your lower back. You don't want to feel any strain here whatsoever. Bend your elbows if you feel any resistance in your lower back. And then slowly push back up. And once again, this should feel like you're getting a massage and giving a massage at the same time. You're not feeling pain or discomfort. And opening up the abdomen now with a good inhale. Exhale. As you lift your hips from the mat, slowly tuck your chin and walk your palms toward your knees until you're able to achieve the cat pose comfortably. You want your knees together and your, your chin tucked all the way into your chest and let the sky just pull your shoulder blades up and slowly begin to rock forward and backwards alternating the weight from your knees to your palms back and forth a nice slow steady movement and exhale as you sit all the way back onto your feet knees still together just pushing back onto your feet rocking back and forth now alternating the weight from your left knee and your right knee and slowly slide your hands as far out in front of you as you can get them big breaths here we're just going to hold the child's pose for five long breaths every exhale you should feel yourself melting deeper into the position which means your muscles are loosening up Letting go of that tension, all those knots are coming out in your hip flexors and the, where you carry all of the movement and weight throughout your day and every step. And eventually you should be able to rest your forehead onto the mat comfortably with your elbows also touching the ground. And forearms touching the ground all the way to the palms of your hands. Now slowly press your fingertips into the floor, lifting your palms from the mat. And exhale as you press your forehead downward, and you should feel this in the middle of your neck. This will release any pinched nerves, any tight muscles in your neck. And now you should be able to really press your chin and lift your forehead. Kind of engaging a little bit lower down the spine between your shoulder blades and relax your arms push up just a little bit so that your head is elevated from the mat and we're gonna shake our head no slowly shake your head no and slowly nod your head yes breathing nice and steady and no And slowly using your palms to push up, we're going to slide the hands close to the knee, coming into all fours, cross your feet behind you, and sit back into the cross-legged position. Coming back to the shoulders, we're going to reach both arms out in front of you, and right arm over the left elbow. You're gonna pull that back in like we did before, but this time attempt to put your palms together. This will intensify that shoulder stretch now that we've gotten it warmed up and grounded and a little bit of that tension released, we can advance into the next stage of this shoulder stretch, further releasing that tension and release arms stretched out to the sides and back into left 
elbow over the right elbow and attempt to put your palms together. My palms aren't together. It's just the, what you're attempting. When I first started this, I looked a little more like this and I actually couldn't even really grab my wrist. But the more you gain that flexibility, the more you'll be able to pull your shoulder in front of you downward and have a nice fluid change for stretching those shoulder blades, eliminating pinched nerves and neck tension. Very good for mental health. And release, arms stretched out. And now you're gonna rest your left arm and let your right arm come over your head, keeping your back straight, perpendicular with the ground. You do have a curve to the side, but you should have your elbow all the way to the side to help you remind your back to straight. And then you can point your pointer finger over, bending your left elbow. Very simple pose. It sounds more complex than it is. Nice three long breaths here as you open your side body. Core in tight. It's very important to keep your belly button in. Elbow to the sky for all three deep breaths. And on your third exhale, we're gonna lift the arm to the sky and let that draw you back seated using your left hand to push you off the floor so your back uses no muscles at all. And we're gonna airplane over to the other side, bending your right elbow all the way. It should be in your right tricep and on your glutes not be using your back muscles for any of this. We're just stretching the back, side body. Three long breaths, elbow to the sky, belly in tight. And push your right hand into the floor to bring you back into the seated position. And lower your left arm. And push back. And we're gonna put all of the weight onto your hands behind you and drop your neck down behind you and rocking back and forth. Just massaging your shoulders with your neck. So your neck and shoulders are massaging each other. Big breath in. Press your fingertips into the floor to bring you back up. Don't use your back muscles. And now we're just gonna grab your ankles, pulling the flats of your feet the butterfly pose very simple basic stuff you learned in elementary G PE here today <laughs> this is for everybody and honestly giving yourself this a couple times a week these moments will start to feel so good that you'll want to do them more and they become habitual and you're spending your time productively now instead of unproductively so when you're when I am watching Netflix and I'm eating and I'm not doing things that I need to be doing, I just get this overwhelming sense of wasting time. And our time here is so precious. I mean, you might live to be a hundred, but some of us don't get that opportunity. Some of us don't even get to achieve all of the, the goals we have in life before it's taken from us and we move to the next chapter in the spiritual world. In my opinion, if your time is spent feeling pleasure and joy, you're doing it right. There is nothing wrong with it as long as you're able to earn those moments on your own work, then you're not hurting anybody. Nice five long breaths here, opening our hip flexors and groin muscles and Just gonna slightly come up and rotate to the right side, bringing your chin to your right knee, and rotating back to the other side, bringing your chin to your left knee, feeling that in your lower back, rocking it back and forth like the waves, breathing nice and steady, belly in tight to the spine. Nice elongated spine chin to the feet, knee, feet, knee, nice long breaths, wonderful, moving 
down the body into the back of the thigh. We're going to extend your right leg out in front of you. And chest to the right knee, just opening up the back of your hamstring, right thigh. You might feel it in your calves even if your toes are pointed to the sky. Just want a nice straight back. The idea is not to touch your toes, it is to bring your chest to your knee until you feel resistance in your hamstring. And in every breath, you exhale and it increase, just melt a little bit more. And when you inhale, you focus the oxygen on your hamstring or whatever muscle group you want it to focus on. And three long breaths there. On your third exhale, we're gonna come up and switch. And back down to the left knee, toes to the sky, chest to the knee. Really opening up your hamstrings. I do find my left leg and arm, strangely, is more flexible than my right leg and arm. Those are my side. It seems like there's more muscle and more use. There's more stiffness and more, less flexibility. So it's okay to spend more time on your right leg than your left if you're trying to balance it out, because I'm all about balance. And back up. Both legs out in front. Very nice, very nice toe touch here if you can yet. If you can't, that's fine. You just want to feel a little, a little stretch in your lower back as you pull your chest to your knees. Really opening up both hamstrings together here. Toes to the sky. One breath in. Exhale and really pull into it as hard as you can. This is a very safe stretch. You can feel a little resistance, a little pressure on this one. And back up. Now point your toes directly out in front of you and back down to engage your shins. The front of your legs and ankles should feel a nice comfortable stretch here. And if you're able to kind of massage your feet while you're here, uh, this will help create a uh, more arch support. Oddly enough, it will massage your arches and help you have better posture throughout the day just because you're not limping around on your achy feet. Totally grab your feet. Getting some interaction with the show. Hi guys. <laughs> wow, it looks like we have a lot more viewers than we had last episode but nobody likes talking about food, as far as I know. All right, and coming out of that position, we're gonna bring the right leg over your left leg, pulling your knee into your chest, and really engaging the glutes on the right side. I don't feel anything in this pose, and even if I do the rock the baby, you can try to this way and open up uh, your glute muscles and really stretch out your um, sciatica area but if you don't feel anything here you can pull your left knee in cross your right knee over your left knee and then making sure you push your right glute into the floor bring your chest down to the knee in front of you I've got my shoulders and my hips squared with each other and aligned I'm not making more than a 90 degree angle with either one of my knees what happens if you do that is you could cause a lot of strain on the inside of your kneecap which can be impairing if you're a runner i was limited to the bike for about six weeks because i could not run my knees were so sore and I found that it was because in order to get your quads and your glutes stretched out you have to really put a lot of bend into your knee it's not healthy if you go past that 45 degree angle. So each one of them's at a 45 degree angle, so I got a nice straight line here. Still pressing the glutes down firmly into the mat. That's where you're gonna feel that stretch. 
and intensify it by leaning forward. You can use your hands to pull you forward more. One thing that I like to focus on is bringing my chest my over my right knee. This will help keep a nice elongated spine. Just really pressing the crown of your head forward and feeling that stretch in your groin and glute muscle. And about the third exhale, we're gonna come back up and we're gonna switch. So if you're still like this, we're gonna bring the left leg over the right knee and pull your knee into your chest. Or we're doing the more advanced modification 90 degree knees really pressing the left side into the mat breathing deeply and trying to get that chin over the knee chest to the knees even better the more you can elongate your spine the better and you're pulling your belly in here just so much focus on every inhale just focusing that energy and melting deeper with every exhale Really feel that opening up in your right glutes. Sorry, your left one. We're on the left one now. <laughs> Wonderful. And continuing on with loosening up and massaging the glutes and um, hip flexors, we're going to come into where we're sitting very comfortably just on your bum, you're sitting 90 degree angle with your knees, feet flat on the floor, shoulders and hips square. And then just take your right, your left leg and put your left ankle onto your right knee and slowly attempt to draw the flat of your left foot to the floor. And back up and now your left knee to the floor. And we're going to massage our lower back this way and glute muscles, all that whole area. Rocking back and forth. Nice steady movements. You're using the strength in your right thigh to do this. You don't want to be using your back because your hips have to stay squared up with your shoulders. So if you're using your back muscles, you're twisting your back, it can be very dangerous. So I did that about five times, and now I'm gonna switch to the right leg, really pulling that foot all the way to the floor, and the knee all the way to the floor. This is a really fun one. Both of my arms are straight. Got enough padding under me so I'm not feeling any pressure on my tailbone all right wonderful and now we're just gonna hug the knees and release and now we're gonna slowly roll the spine down the mat lift your feet from the mat let yourself just Rolly poly down, keeping your knees to your chest. And slowly rock back and forth. The way I like to say to do this is use your legs. So I'm basically doing a bicycle movement with my hips right now, but I'm not letting my knees go away my chest. So I'm using my lower back, kind of, and just pedaling, if you will and rocking back and forth. And if you can, grab your feet and pull yourself into the butterfly pose on your back. Three long breaths here. And you want to draw every vertebrae to the ground from your tailbone to your lower back to the middle of your torso spine, to the top of your shoulder blades, all the way up to your neck and head. Really pressing your spine into the floor. And if you're comfortable here, you can spread your legs and 
come into happy baby. It's silly looking, but man, does it feel good. And I'm pressing my knees into the floor. And you can try to tap your knees to the floor and rock side to side if you like. And release, pulling your feet back together and sliding your hands back into hugging your knees. We're going to come out of this just like you went into it. And now keeping all those vertebrae that you worked so hard to get glued to the floor, we're keeping them down and slowly extending your feet out in front of you. Couple breaths in. And lower slowly so we engage the core strength. And now pull your belly button to the floor. Just ho ho try so hard to get that belly button to touch the floor and put the flats of your hands onto the floor into the ground. You want to feel like a magnet is pulling your entire body into the ground. And starting at the crown of your head, just going to sink and relax. top of your neck, behind your ears, in your face. Your breathing is steady, but you're now relaxed. You're not worried about your core being in tight. Finally, just relax your shoulders. Let them melt onto the mat. And release all the tension in your collarbone and chest. Really let your back of your arms drop to the mat and you're relaxing your elbows and your hands. All up the forearms, just each muscle group, one at a time. Nice breath in. Exhale as you lower your back to the mat. As press into the mat as you can without moving a muscle. Just melting into it. And your lower back. Everybody I know right now has lower back pain. It's insane. I think when we're walking and running so much, driving. If you drive a lot, you probably got a lot of lumbar pain or discomfort. Right now, gluing that to the floor while relaxing and letting your muscles Letting your tailbone become one with the ground. All of your glute muscles, hip muscles, my saddle bags, <laughs> and the backs of your thighs just melting and melting as if they were trying to touch the core of the earth, trying to seep through the floor. And your feet, just relax your feet. Relax your toes, the tops of your feet, your ankles. And relax your knees. Relaxing music. Relax in your belly. Really feel your breath coming in and out of your lungs as they create a symphony with your heartbeat. Really focusing on all of the insides that make you happen every day. How will you feed them today? What will you sacrifice to take better care of them? You gotta put that cigarette out. You gotta quit putting, buying vape. You gotta quit. It's so bad. Your lungs are telling you that right now as you connect everything in moderation. Take care of those organs. Maybe someday you can donate them to someone who needs them. 
If you take well enough care of it, you can make a difference in somebody's life. Another big breath in. And we're gonna focus on our face. How will you affect people with your face today? Keep wearing a smile. You know, keep yourself happy. Make sure your eyes are seeing pleasurable things. And your voice is speaking logical things. We're coming up to the brain. Today's episode is all about mental health. And I'm slowly going to lift, tucking my chin to my chest, lifting the shoulders and lifting the arms from the mat and sliding them slowly up into the seated forward and Back up and back to chatting. <laughs> I really hope you enjoyed that nice relaxing meditation practice and you feel limber and all of the stress relieved out of your neck and back. And if not, I would love to hear your feedback and I have a couple resources if you'd like for um, some alternative methods. Uh, I have suffered a couple back injuries. I've broken my back twice, so I've been doing this practice for a long time and I don't have any back pain since I lost um, some excess weight. Um, the combination of just giving yourself a couple times a week meditation and some back muscle releasing practice is the best thing you can do for your back and losing any excess weight. Um, I don't know if you've ever, if this is your first time tuning in, but in a couple of my past episodes, I've described the difference between if you take one of those big five gallon jugs of water that you put on the water cooler at work and carry that a hundred feet, put it down and tell me how your back feels. That is only, I think those weigh 45 pounds. Um, so imagine losing 45 pounds and not having to carry that water jug around anymore. How great your back would feel. It all starts right here. Anyone can do this. So if you get started today with me, tune in next episode for a lot more fitness. But until then, I wanna show you some of my art and you're probably not gonna be as impressed as I am with my own stuff. But when you know where you're coming from, it's a lot easier to impress yourself. And when you know what obstacles you face, and you can see them in front of you, they're so much easier to take on. So as I practice, I get better and I get stronger and more will to learn and I seek out resources and that's what you can do for yourself as well. Find a fitness practice that works for you and nail it. It doesn't have to be here with me, but I do like to hear your feedback. So if you do have a minute to reach out to me on social media, I highly encourage it. I would love to hear some feedback on our meditative practice today and little tips and tricks I might be able to utilize for my art improvement. But until then, I hope you enjoy this quick slideshow with a couple of my favorite pieces. I've probably done about 100 paintings and 50 sketches, but I only picked out the ones that I've done more recently to show you because, like I said, I got better and better over the last couple of years when I've been more in tune with my health and learned to balance it from my three-dimensional perspective. Thanks for working out with me. I hope you enjoy my gallery. This is one that I do in about a minute. I was just feeling really down and someone said, draw a self-portrait. So I drew that one and I wasn't proud of myself. So I turned the page and started drawing this drawing not finished yet um, but I thought I'd spend a little more time with some charcoal pen. Another one this was a gift for my friend that I went to high school with and these are her three boys grown now um, the one the tall one there's I think going on 19 now so this one's from quite a while ago and I feel like I've come a long way since that one so very very proud of it because I put a lot into it 
And then here we have Mount Rainier. Same friend actually went hiking up Mount Rainier and posted this gorgeous photograph. So I sketched this out in about two hours. <laughs> um, it was just a likeness of that photograph. Oh, my buddy Mary's dog bear. I love this drawing. I'm so proud of it. I, I feel a lot of pride in this one because it came out so good and it was also a gift for her. Uh, she's contributed to my art so much. <laughs> so that was kind of a thank you. And here we have G, one of my very best friend's son. He's four years old now. Um, in this photo that I sketched, he was probably not even one yet. Um, and then here we have a dollar bill. This was done on a 14 by 19 paper, which I obviously cut a little off of to make it the right shape of a dollar bill. But the ah, this is one of my first paintings I did on paper. And I was transitioning out of the sketching and more into painting, so... Here's my first canvas painting that I was proud of. Now, I did a lot of paintings before this, but and I know this looks kind of rudimentary, um, but I do love this painting. Uh, it hangs on my wall to this day. This is one of my very first ones. Same with this one here. I just felt the need to put these colors on a canvas, and I loved it so much. My brother liked it. My mom liked it, so my brother and I decided we were each gonna paint another one for her for Mother's Day. So she has two versions of that painting uh, for Mother's Day, and I've got that one original. And that's my buddy Dave. We did lose him uh, in 2020, which was a tough year for everyone. So losing him at the end of the year was, was one that stuck with me. So I hung a big giant canvas, and this is a mural collection of paintings from all my friends that came to his birthday party. And that's my first paint along with Bob Ross. He did a winter scene with the Aurora Borealis. That was my, oh, I think I could have done better. <laughs> um, so as you can see, these, these are two little four by four, or four little four by fours that hang in my kitchen. They're just uh, my own painting to decorate my kitchen. You can do whatever you want with your art. And I like looking at that even though it's pretty simple. It's the colors I needed and that's another thing beautiful thing about art is you can make it however you want and then here we have me starting to go to classes so this was a, a class I went to with some friends there was another class there with a different group of friends where you go and you know you all paint the same likeness but your version of it and everyone painted this one uh, warm tones daytime warm tones sunset I decided hey I'm gonna go with some of the cooler tones for this one and make it a nightscape and I was really proud of that. Here's another little work in progress for decorative purposes. I got a yellow and gray room I'd like to put a little painting in and why go and spend money on somebody else's painting when I can use my time to make my own. And I did this paint along with a guy on YouTube. So I'm learning. I feel like I'm getting better. Um, I painted this one along with a guy on YouTube and then I moved on to um, teaching that painting in a, in a future one we'll show in a minute here. And then sometimes I do like to just paint for a gift. This was a, I was a secret Santa for one of my co-workers. We work for the fairies so I thought how appropriate. Went on her Facebook and that was one of her favorite photographs. So I slapped some paint on canvas and I thought she would enjoy that one and I hope she does. And then here's my neighbor's yard. I start now I'm getting more into painting freestyle. I just sit in my window and look at these flowers she plants and I can't get over how beautiful they are. So I just decided to use my time to paint them and that was another gift. And then here we have one of my first original silhouettes. Um, I really like this one. It, it's harder than I, it looks because it was my first oil painting and, it, and then I started getting better with these acrylics. Um, so that oil painting took me more work than the acrylics do. As you can see with the acrylics here, hey, if you ever go to the Southworth Ferry Dock, you'll see that one hanging up. And then like I said, we came back around with some more of those waves. And I think if you've watched episode three with me here today, you probably could just paint this one along with me. We painted this one together on this show. And then here's another one you can 
YouTube, uh, how to paint fire. And I found this fire beach scene I painted with acrylics. I really like how that turned out. So it's not my original image, however. This next one is my original image. It's a story. Um, the first one is guy meets lady. There's only one tree. Very simple landscape, not a lot of knowledge. Second one, you got your family in chaos and you're taking advantage of rest moments. And then finally, you have your more complex family of trees and now that's time to rest and kind of a little storyline on that one. This is my most recent and favorite painting. I'm actually repainting this on a larger canvas. I love it so much. Uh, it's my own image. I created it in my mind. And same with the next one we're going to see here. Uh, I'm not 100% I'm not with trees yet, but I'm working on it. Um, this one's not finished. I can't wait to share it with you once I get the rest of the leaves on. You can see on the left there I started putting the leaves in, so all of the willow branches will look like that in the end. It's me practicing trees. And a couple that I've done more recently were gifts. Uh, this is, I have to say, my all-time most prided one. I finished this one literally weeks ago. And it was a gift for a close lady, a close friend in my life. She's a lady I've known for 12 years and, um, you know, I visit, look out on her porch and I just said, wow, that tree is in full bloom. I'm going to paint that. She said, go ahead. So I show up a couple weeks later, a couple months later, and she just loves it. So I'm really proud of that one. And I'm working right now on one. It's a family portrait for another lady, her mother actually. It's her 93rd birthday's coming up. So, yeah, as you can see, um, they're getting there. They're getting better. <laughs> and I really hope you liked looking at my photos of my paintings. And I'm gonna keep at it, hopefully getting better and better, take some classes, invest some money in some good materials, and use my time to do things that I love and hopefully you will be using your time for things you love as well and impressing yourself each and every day because that's what we're here for we're here for our vibes and that's that like mental health is very important today we focus a lot on mental health and uh, meditative practice that I hope you can carry with you going forward but before we go, I do want to cover one more quick PowerPoint of some good content that hopefully you can take with you and use in your daily life. So I, I only have five more minutes with you folks, so I'll, don't worry, I'll make it brief. <laughs> um, my three rules of thumb for mental health is if you want to feel good about yourself, you need to be kind, you need to be clean, and you need to be healthy. So those are your three rules, it's that simple. If you're kind to others, they will be kind back to you and you won't feel as much shame or loneliness. Um, if you keep your environment clean, you'll naturally stay healthy. You'll save money on having to replace things that got misused or lost. Um, and you also eliminate the stress of searching for things or whatever, you know, like just keeping your environment clean is a big deal. Um, and then, like I said, be healthy, do these meditations, take care of your health, eat right. These are all huge um, rules when it comes to having a strong mental health. And it all starts inside your own head. Our brains are so strong. And I'll tell you, there's enough information on the internet to confirm anything you believe in. So it's all a matter of what are you seeking out? What is it that matters to you? So get on the internet if you want to do some browsing, find some mental health support, find some reading material. Um, maybe if you struggle with one of those three rules, you can pinpoint your search. Uh, like for example, I got a really good friend of mine, I'm going to go help her today. <laughs> Uh, she needs help organizing her home. She said, I, your house is always so clean. I could just stop by any time and you're not freaking out about 
oh, my house is a mess. And I said, that's because it stays that way all the time. I have a routine. I have a daily system. I make time for it, even though I have a full-time job, a TV show, and a couple of people that I still help clean for. It's still very, very important that you have a system in your daytime. And part of that day is reorganizing and resetting yourself for the next day. Whether you do this first thing in your morning or you do this last thing in your night or smack in the middle of the day when you get home from work, find that time, find that moment that you normally would just come home and plop down and be lazy and start picking your house, run the vacuum, load the dishwasher if you're blessed enough to have one. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> So be grateful too, um, that's always important for mental health, but I also categorize that with being kind. Um, to be kind is to be grateful and appreciate people, see the good in them. Everyone has flaws, including you, and it's all a matter of, do you want people to focus on those or do you want them to focus on your qualities and do that back for your community around you? So I hope that's helpful for everybody and I hope you can take some of this information with you today. I know I had a great, great time and I really hope you did as well. And I see you again next week with a high endurance fitness practice that I'm going to do right here back at my old studio. Bye everybody. I hope you have a wonderful week. I love you and press yourself.